Hola. All right, people. I pretty much wear the glasses full time now. <laughs> totally adjusted. Um, I now if I don't have them on, I feel like I'm blind. It's the funniest thing. So, well, my therapist was telling me it is like a neurological adjustment, and so I obviously I've, I've passed it. Um, what can I tell you? Today was a great day. So it started off not so great, but it's ended great. We had pretty much the last major tornado repair happened today. This um, asphalt crew came and did the proper driveway repair, which we had had a driveway repair months and months and months ago, and it was like the craziest, worst repair of all time. Um, and I was pretty stressed out last night because anything like tornado related like pushes me off the deep end. Um, but... Um, and then I have to like hide in the house over there, but then I left because we had to go up to Flint to pick up my grandmother's old dressing table for baby, which I'm sure is going to be like a huge hit. And going to Flint was interesting. I haven't been there in a really long time. And I said <laughs> to kid, because when we got off the highway, I'm like, oh my gosh, this totally reminds me of Asheville. And she was like, well, there were some good parts of Asheville. And then she was like, actually, to tell you the truth, there really weren't. <laughs> that was awesome. No offense, Ashevillians. Um, but no, it was like Asheville in that there's this really high-end, wealthy neighborhood, but like two blocks away, dumps. And it was like, it, it definitely had that same feel. Um, which is just my personal perception, so... But anyway, Flint is fascinating because, you know, it's got some really bad times. But you're, like, in this fancy neighborhood, and the houses, I mean, you can't believe them. And you can get them for less than my current house, you know, because no one really wants to move there. But, I mean, like, you can't believe them. I mean, they're, like, huge mansions. And so I was telling Kid, you know, I love, I love having her with me all the time. It's just so fun. I was talking about how, like, we could really get one of these houses for, like, the same price as our house. And then um, she was like, yes, but the problem is you can't afford the furniture for those houses. And then I was like, oh, true. She's so smart. Um, and that is true. We drove by this house. I mean, I don't even care that it's in Flint. I'm going to be watching it and see if it ever goes in the market. Like, a massive, unbelievable, like, Spanish-style castle with huge, like, you know, uh, terracotta tiled roof and, like, huge open courtyards. and I mean, it was, like, unbelievable. I'm keeping my eye on it because you never know. That thing might go up for, like, $200,000. And then our life can be transformed into the princess life I always dreamed for myself. Um, anyway, that's, I don't know, if you've ever been up there, you know what I'm talking about. So anyway, we did that, and then we were close to Frankenmuth, which no one who isn't from here will know what that is, but it's this crazy, like, alpine tourist town <laughs> in the middle of Michigan, and um, on the outskirts is this giant, you know, of course, like, outlets place, but the town has the world's largest Christmas store, which is crazy. I mean, you're in there, I mean, it's miles and miles of Christmas stuff, and, um, but they're also famous for these funny... German, you know, Bavarian inns with, are that are competing across the street from each other for their basically fried chicken. Best chicken in the world. <laughs> I don't even like fried chicken, and this stuff is the best chicken in the world. So it's like $1 million, but it's totally worth it. It's called an MSG. I don't know what's going on, but it's like delicious. So I took the kids up there, they were so excited, and it turns out lunch is much cheaper than dinner, FYI. And we went there, and then there's like, it's just, just cute little tourist town, tons of fudge shops. Did you know Michigan is all about the fudge shops? Like, just like Mackinac Island is, but so is Frankenmuth. So you like, you know, fudge shops, but they also have an awesome toy store. So this is like a pretty good outing, people. I mean, I don't know what you're going to do if you're vegetarian, but if you're not, chicken. Chicken is in. So, we went to this awesome toy shop, and I think it's called Frankenmuth Toy and 
kite or something. I mean, it's a really nice toy store. I'm not joking around. So if you're going there, go to this toy store. It's across the street from the visitor center and the museum. Anyway, huge selection of like Playmobil and Calico Critters and whatever other things you might be interested in. But here's where it, it got really great. I mean, where a day really became fantastic. They had all their demo Playmobil stuff from their, like, you know, they have, like, some stuff out on display. All that stuff bagged up. Perfect condition sets of Playmobil for, like, 25% of the normal cost. People, it was like a dream come true. <laughs> so that was awesome because I was going to let the kids get some kind of, like, stupid souvenir. And then we were able to get this, like, awesome, huge set of Playmobil that goes with our current set for like less than I was gonna pay for like stupid little souvenirs. So it was like glory. Then we went to the outlets because kid needs shoes for school and I do not like to go to the outlets because generally you get sucked in and then you realize what the hell I'm paying like full price for last year's stuff. It's not even on sale. Um, but it's good for one thing. The Merrill outlet. There's a Merrill outlet people and there's all the Merrills you could ever want and they're legitimately on sale and um, they have a small kids section but they do have one so we scored perfect shoes for school they are cute their Merrells are super comfortable if you are like a kid and myself and you have extremely sensitive feet and Merrells are for you also if you're a woman I mean they have so many shoes there like you've never seen so many different styles so it's worth going to for that alone men not so much theirs aren't really they don't have that much selection and what they have they also have like the current stuff so you can get the regular shoes but um you know the problem with those outlets is you have to go back to the outlet to return so it's not worth it no one cares about this but here's where the day gets even better so this was like an hour and a half away we come home and the driveway's finished and they did a perfect job and they removed the two huge dirt mound wood chip piles from the big trees that fell on the side of our driveway. Removed like all of that, braided the whole thing, not just those, like the whole edge of our driveway between two new trees. I mean, way bigger than I ever would have thought and way down into the yard and seeded it and it's perfect. No repair on the house has gone like this. <laughs> Granted, this is their second try, but um, they brought in a real company this time and Oh my god, I'm amazed. I'm so relieved. So now, the front of our house, that's all done. We just need to get a sprinkler and get that grass growing. And so, you know, up here at the top of our hill is where we lost the other trees. And obviously that wasn't covered by insurance because it wasn't touching the driveway. I don't know why they did all that down there. They went way further than what was ever even covered. So I'm just really extremely excited about it. Um... But up here, no one sees that crap. It's up at the, I mean, it's way up on the top of a hill. It's nowhere near, there's no entry point. So we had had some volunteers, which was like, oh, really crazy experience, come and like hand dig out one of those, which we had to actually end up hand digging out with them because you feel really bad when you're weird hodgepodge of volunteers are doing it. And, um, and it was over 100 degrees that day, and it was like a total nightmare. And now it's just this pit and like doesn't look good at all. But I was like, whatever. I'm just going to get some bags of soil, spread it out there, good enough, plant some seed when it's not so blazing hot. That's my only bummer. I mean, this is great, is that like, I'm afraid the seed won't grow because it's so hot. I mean, it was 100 degrees again yesterday. What the hell is going down? Um, what else? But either way, people, I think you can tell that I'm so excited to have something go right with this tornado repair and to be that much closer to done because now we're pretty much done they're going to come back and seal it in a couple of days but these people were so top-notch i'm not even stressed about that everything else that's gone down something's it's just been like a nightmare like everything has been done shoddily and have to be redone and you know it's just like god it just kills me so now all that's left is repairing our kitchen ceiling which we're doing ourselves because i am done having those yahoos in the house and it's just not worth it. And I feel like I got my money's worth out of getting this like yard taken care of. I mean, that is a delight. And then get the house finished painted, um, which is going to be a long run. People, I don't love the blue. I don't love it. I know it was my idea, 
and the blue is kind of this color of my shirt. And it looks great. I'm just not feeling it for myself. I love the brown bronzy color that all the trim is. Fantastic. Modern and clean. I feel like the blue is a little dated. I don't know. I don't love it. I didn't want to go mainstream taupe or, you know, moss green like everyone does with this kind of brick. And the blue is definitely a bold choice. And it does look good. I just don't love it for myself. Unfortunately, Mr. F, who was hesitant about it, is in love with it. I mean, it's like, I'm never going to convince him to paint it unless we have to sell the house. And then I would totally convince him that this is too risky of a color. People, we might be moving. <laughs> Shh. Maybe, maybe not. We're really hoping not, but we're definitely, it's on the table now. But we're hoping that we get to stay here. More on that later, people. I'm trying to be excited about it and just think about adventure time. You never know what could be next. Hopefully we're staying. We're really hoping for that. That would be the best possible thing. But we'll, we'll know more in a couple of weeks.